President, I am not surprised that the committee members decided to, in unity, approve this particular uh, nominee and then recommending same to the Senate. I am not surprised because I am also very happy with this nomination. So far, in the first tenure of this man, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, he displayed rare courage, independence, and impartiality in so many things that he did, as far as I am concerned. The only problem with INEC is down, down, down the ladder. When you have quite a lot of people recruited from different places with different mindsets, with different uh, uh, political affiliations here and there. That is the only problem with INEC. So I will urge, while confirming this particular nomination, which is very important, I want to thank the committee chairman, uh, the great man from Kano, former governor of that place, and all other members for this very wonderful job they did over the weekend. Truly, truly, for we are now transiting again. My only appeal to this great man is for him to be more careful and cautious about the staff of INEC, the staff of INEC. And he has a job to do, and he has a name to protect as we go down through this uh, another transition. His name, the name that he will make after this next one, is far more important than the faces of human beings that will be appearing before him for favors. Mr. Uh, uh, President, my highly respect colleagues, I'm happy with this nomination, and that's the reason why when he was nominated, the announcement was made through this Senate. Nigerians rejoice. But what is important, crucial, is for him to do the job and leave a legacy that will be far, far, far important than whatever achievements that he has done so far. Thank you, Mr. President, for the DSP. Thank you, Mr. President. Uvi Omo Agege Delta Central Central District. Mr. President, first, uh, I'd like to begin by thanking Professor Yakubu, conducted the affairs of INEC in the last five years. Mr. President, let me also thank uh, uh, the INEC uh, uh, committee for a very good job going through this report, uh, taking their time in putting together everything we needed to know about uh, uh, the chairman of uh, INEC. Frankly, all he did, or the committee did, was bring to the fore what most of us, you know, have always known uh, about uh, the INEC uh, chairman, about his comportment, his temperament. The more, more important than all of this is intelligence for those of us who have uh, interacted, you know, uh, with him. Mr. President, I stand today to support this nomination, not just so much because of all that has been said about him, but because the chairman is a chairman who recognizes the limitations placed on INEC by the Enabling Law, which is the Electoral Act. And he has been very, very forthcoming. He has been very, very creative, com 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 coming up with creative ideas on how we can sanitize the system. Mr. President, I have been very, very privileged and honored to have worked with him in this uh, uh, endeavor, uh, both during my membership of uh, uh, the committee on INEC in the 8th Senate, and now uh, as an uh, uh, honorary member of uh, uh, the committee uh, uh, on INEC. Mr. President, I'm excited because he's very, very willing to accommodate a lot of the reforms that we seek, and uh, uh, most of those reforms uh, were brought to the fore during uh, uh, the, the retreat that was conducted by uh, INEC in uh, uh, Lagos just before uh, the, the lockdown. 
I'm very, very confident, Mr. President, that uh, uh, the report on the INEC uh, 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 committee dealing with electoral reform will be out in no time, and uh, uh, the amended electoral uh, act will give him the enabling environment to be able to give us uh, uh, a very, very good uh, uh, elections going forward. So with these few remarks, Mr. President, uh, I support uh, uh, this nomination. Thank you very much. Minority Leader. Mr. President, I just have uh, only a comment to make with regard to the, uh, the way that we did the confirmation and the I think that usually, by our convention, the head of INEC usually comes in front of the Senate and we act as a committee of the whole in plenary. I had posed this question to the chairman. And he said, oh, that because it was a second term. He posed the question to me as well. And I responded the same way. This is not a new person. This is someone that was here before you five years ago. We, had, we wanted to know whether he had the capacity to perform as INEC chairman. So I responded to you the same way. And we said, we must not render our committees uh, useless by taking away some of their responsibilities when we don't have to. I responded the same way, so you can go ahead. What to do, sir, is to say that certain positions, like the INEC position, uh, means that if after the term of office, even if we bring him a second time, there are new experiences that he has garnered that the world needs for us to ventilate through our collective uh, review of his uh, uh, nomination. Be that as it may, uh, I will suggest that what happens with us in a parliament is always that you build up a body of conventions and things that you do. If we continue to change at every time, then we'll have a parliament that doesn't actually have... Uh, minority leader, we'll make sure change the convention. If we have another person going for second term, he's not coming here. So that we maintain this... Uh, because we build the convention ourselves. And if you have any advice for INEC chairman, you can give the, 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 the advice even here, without him around. So we are not going to bring someone and not bring another person. The records very straight. I fully concur with the opinions canvassed, especially the one canvassed in the report that we saw about the introduction of the INEC portal where election results are transmitted at the end of every poll. That is the reason why you find today that after the due election, not too much problem because everybody saw it. After the undue elections, not too many problems because everybody saw it. And if we use this going forward, because what is important for us is to make sure that votes count and votes matter. And so, so that we can always have a situation where we no longer will have too many votes coming from Boko Haram infested. Um, Senator Abaribe, no. no, you can't do that. You can't say that. You can't say that. This is, this is uh, castigating and demeaning those of us from Boko Haram infested areas. And if there were votes from Boko Haram infested areas, there were genuine votes. I'm not speaking for Senator Kashim Shetima uh, or Senator Ibrahim Bome, but I think it's only fair that you don't judge the votes from, from 
northeastern states as maybe fake votes or something, please. Mr. President, words in my mouth. But I will say that this is a very good innovation. Number three, the technical improvements in the smart reader, the uh, inclusiveness in the uh, voting process and the electoral process, uh, accommodating the Albino Foundation and people with disabilities. These are all the things that we want to happen in the electoral process. I so submit, to President. When I was a minister, I worked with Professor Mahmoud, who was the executive secretary of ETF, now Ted Fund, and he was one of my best chief executives. When he came here, I said I spoke in support of his uh, nomination, and today we are happy that everybody is talking good of him. And uh, in my few interactions with him, he told me that Mr. President never interfered with his job. And that's a very good thing to hear. I'm also aware that Mr. President said at the end of his tenure, he must have left a very good electoral process for this country. So my plea to him and Mr. President that he should have the political will to maintain this standard. We have seen the elections in the last two uh, elections, Undo and uh, Edo, and we wish that subsequent elections will go even better so that the, the, the votes of Nigerians will count and the confidence Nigerians have in the electoral system will be returned. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. We are used to situations where we pull down our own. Today, as a Senate, we are recognizing the fact that there is a square peg in a square hole. This professor sitting as chairman in INEC has demonstrated competence, has shown indeed that he's an unbiased umpire. Today, politicians don't go into elections scared of whether they will be oppressed or not. That is the reality. If you are with your people and you are doing the needful, you can trust that you will go to the field and win your elections. That is the kind of situation we have always asked for. I do believe, going by his performance in the first term, that he will do even better in this second term. I'm looking forward to a situation where we will digitalize our processes even more. Let us be in a position where only the best, as determined by the people, emerge victorious in elections. Let us also go to that situation where you are so conscious of the fact that if you don't do well, you will not return. I do believe that Professor Yakubu is moving in the right direction and we should give him support with this confirmation. The President has done well and we must say so. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Peter Mwabushi. Mr. of the nominee. Mr. President, Two days ago, I read in the newspapers that the PDP senators were opposed to the nomination of the nominee, and that today was going to be hot. But I'm, I'm very happy that everybody who has spoken, majority of people who have spoken today are PDP senators supporting this nomination. That is to show that the belief or what people thought that is going to happen, did not happen. We have disappointed those who thought that we are going to oppose this nomination. I support this nomination wholeheartedly, especially where the chairman and the report say that the man is apolitical. And all, most of us have tried to see if we can link him to any political party or any political association or anywhere, and we have not been able to find anything to the contrary. That shows that he's an unbiased umpire and that he's good and qualified. I'm also very happy that he's a student of history. I have read his, what the chairman has said. He's a professor of history. 
and he knows that history is beckoning on him. And that whatever he's going to do, he will be judged by his, his performance. So on this, note, on this note, I wish to support this nomination. Thank you. If we look at page 8, first paragraph of this report, Mr. President, it speaks to the character of the person we are talking about. That's, I'll just read two lines of that page and that passage. The nominee appealed to the committee and the entire National Assembly to expedite action on the amendment of the Electoral Act within the first quarter of 2021. Mr. President, it takes only a man of integrity to make this appeal. He wants to do credible election in this country. And he's appealing to us to create that enabling environment for him so as to do his job creditably. And so, like other colleagues have said, this man has shown competence, he has shown integrity, he has shown unbiased nature. Because in the past, Mr. President, most INEC chairmen have had to undergo or go through a lot of criticism, especially from opposing parties. There is no person in the opposing party who will oppose the nomination and confirmation of this man today. Because we've shown credibility, he has shown credibility in the process. He is further appealing that this process, we should do our job so that he can do his job better. And so, Mr. President, I believe that there is no further argument about the confirmation of the chairman of our neck, a man with very high integrity. Mr. President can simply put the question, and this man will be confirmed, so that we we'll move to the next agenda. Mr. President. Senator Barkia. Of not even the president or the principal officers, but collective I mean, debate and, uh, and, and resolution at the floor. And I'm happy the point that Senator Wabusi raised here that taking census of those that have contributed on the suitability and integrity of this nomination are people even from the opposition party who ought ordinarily, if the man in question has, has been seen to be partisan to be biased in favor of the uh, present government, that will not have been the case. I want to say an appeal to Nigerians, particularly those that stay outside the shore of Nigeria and fire salvo on the basis of falsehood, mischief with intent to undermine our national institution, to think that it is only somebody who is insane that use negative art to point to the house of their father. I join uh, other colleagues in supporting this domination because the importance of electoral integrity is very crucial to democracy, very crucial to good government. If we are sure that our leadership recruitment methodology is free and fair, that will be the impetus for those who have been elected to continue to act and act in the interest of the constitution, in the interest of the people, knowing very well that in the free and fair contest, they will be rejected if they don't perform according to the wish of the people. I join colleagues to recommend that this. Approval. Will the Senate approve the nomination of Professor Mahmoud Yaqubu for appointment as Chairman Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC? Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Do you have the Senate? Confirmation. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Professor Mahmoud Yaqubu for appointment as Chairman Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC? Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The confirmation, the, the nomination of Professor Mahmoud Yaqubu is hereby confirmed as Chairman Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Congratulations to him and we wish him the best of luck. Leader of the Senate.